Welcome to how to edit portraits. A lot of my friends have always been telling me I should start making YouTube videos. So I thought, you know, the main thing that photography is kind of known for, especially on social media, is portraits. So I was like, okay, let's start by making a how to edit portraits. All right, I'm gonna edit this portrait. I'm happy with this one, okay? Um, I'm sorry if you can also hear my camera focusing, it's needed. <laughs> Okay, the, one of the first things I do with my portraits is I make sure I've got lens corrections on and as you can see it's automatically switched to my lens. If you can't find your lens there's a whole different like plethora of lenses I think that's the word. Okay, okay let's move on. If you can't find your lens you will be able to find it somewhere here unless you use a camera that's very old. What I then do is I turn sharpen down to say 20 because I don't normally keep it at 40. You can double click and then insert whatever amount you want. I'm just going to put 20 because I like this image. It's already quite sharp um, so yeah anyway that's my verdict. If you want to know the location I will put that on screen now so you can see. First of all what you want to do with an image is you want to do the white balance. I'm happy with how this looks. I like the fact his face is quite white. Um, that's because of the light from the uh, tunnel thing where we were shooting um, so I'm just gonna go straight into contrast and I'm gonna just bump that to I think 20 you don't have to do as much as me also you can click Z on your keyboard if you want to kind of like zoom in but if you're zoomed in and you, you could just click on your mouse to zoom in and you just want to zoom out press uh, Z on your keyboard okay that's nice um, I'm gonna turn down highlights minus 50 I think that looks good if you hit J on your keyboard, it will also show you which parts of the image are too overexposed. So as you can see, um, if we have highlights back on zero again, you can just double click on this to reset it back to zero if you don't want to type it in. Shadows, um, there's not much shadows. I'm still going to bump it up to like 20, but I'm then going to bring the blacks down to 20 as well. I think that looks good. That's going to make the, the blacks a bit deeper, um, so it kind of adds more like detail in the blacks. Um, I'm gonna put dehaze on a little bit just to kind of bring some color back to his skin. I really like how that looks that dehaze. Um, I'm gonna leave it on 15. Next I don't ever use saturation or vibrance unless I'm desaturating an image and I like how this image looks. Depends what kind of look you guys want to go for. Uh, vibrance will basically take away all the colors but just it will leave a few. I'm not sure how exactly this works. Clarity, if you wanted to use clarity it um, kind of sharpens your image but then sucks the color out. You can hit the slash key on your keyboard next to shift um, to bring up your before and afters. What you can also do is uh, you can cycle through different kind of before and after versions. Um, I personally don't use these very often um, but that's that's just personal preference and you can then hit slash on your keyboard again to kind of get back to your normal view if you don't know how to. Colors, okay I'm gonna make this red a bit darker and I'm gonna increase saturation a bit. I think that looks good. Orange, I'm gonna increase the color orange just a bit. It's gonna kind of make his, his pigment on his face look a bit less pale. Um, what I'm also gonna do is hit J on my keyboard or you can just click where I clicked for the adjustment brush. I'm gonna do the half of his face that I feel is overexposed and I'm just gonna do this quite rough because of the tutorial. I'm doing it for tutorial sake. In fact, you should obviously zoom in when you're doing this if you hit Z on your keyboard. Um, Although I do like how his face looked um, because of the light, I'm just going to drown it a little bit. What you can also do is you can hit M on your keyboard for a graduated filter and if you drag from the side, it will change the lighting here and it will gradually decrease it so it doesn't look abnormal. Actually, I'm going to leave exposure and I'm just going to increase highlights so it's just a subtle increase of um, exposure. And I'm just going to hit done because I'm quite happy with that. Right now what we've got is we've evened out the skin tones, we've evened out the jacket so it looks a bit less uh, covered in light. And we've also maintained the brightness of this, um, which is good and you can see kind of the colours coming through from this thing now. And what I'm also going to do is go back to the adjustment brush on my keyboard and then I'm going to draw around the eyes and I'm going to put some more uh, light on those. Because brown eyes in environments like this tend to be quite dark and I just want to make sure that it matches the exposure of the rest of the image so I'm kind of brightening. Again if we go back to this color stuff you can change the various colors in your image um, depending on your preference of course. Um, if you do it too much you'll get to, you'll start seeing these little blotches of color which look in my opinion quite ugly. Um, so I'm just going to increase it a tad and I'm going to do blue as well. Although don't do blue too much because some of your image will be naturally blue like on the face or something like that so when you increase blue it will also 
increased blue on the face too, and we don't want that. Split toning, so this will make your highlights a certain colour, and um, you can do whichever colour you wish. Um, however, I'm happy with how this looks, so I'm not going to touch split toning. So don't touch something if you just don't edit something for the sake of editing it. If it doesn't need editing, don't touch it. What I like doing is to center out the image slightly so the subject is completely in the middle and there's no like framing issues. So I am just going to do this like quite briefly. I am just going to rotate him a little bit just because I see that he's kind of um, to one side a little bit. Um, I'm going to stick a vignette on it, just a slight vignette because I like doing that um, in some images. Um, and also you can play with calibration, but I am genuinely happy with this image. I don't feel as if I need to play with this too much. I'm just gonna put blue primer to minus eight. Damn, okay, what, what the hell happened? Oh, my hue's been changed and I'm happy with that. Um, so what you can do now is go to file, export, um, quality, make sure that's on 100. Make sure when you render you've got a watermark. It, I advise that if you don't want to use that, then don't do it. Um, make sure you're on sRGB, uh, you can do JPEG or PNG, it's completely up to you, depending on uh, where you're putting this. Um, file naming, uh, name it whatever you like, it's up to you. Export location, that's personal preference, doesn't matter. Um, make sure your file settings is copyright only. This is very important if you upload your photos anywhere. If you upload your photos anywhere, make sure it's copyright only. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. but I strongly advise that you do so and you're just gonna hit export and you're done and that's it <laughs> if this video helped um, please leave a like and a comment if you have any future suggestions in what you would like me to do please uh, let me know I'll have my social medias like somewhere like in the description or something I don't know just if you want uh, to suggest anything please let me know and I'll probably do a face retouching tutorial next um, if you'd like to see that and if you have any other suggestions please um, I'm very open-minded